Britain's most powerful weapon on the Indo-Myanmar border. Young, enthusiastic, fearless, impressionable. They come cheap, eat less, travel light, and are easy to manipulate. And they have very few demands. <laughs> 17-year-old Moiru is one of the hundreds of children recruited by militant outfits here. Though there aren't any, in Alpha's Kada list, the outfit outsources teenagers to ferry explosives, even lob grenades. Last year, two boys carrying explosives for Alpha were blown up in Tezpu. But others like the NSCF, the UNLF, the PLA, openly recruit children. NDTV managed to get rare access that's often denied to international observers. The boys demonstrate their combat skills. The smallest boys are placed closest to the enemy because, say their leaders, they are the most fearless. And when they are not, they are given helpful doses of drugs. <laughs> Vigilant Justice. This 16-year-old boy has been assigned to take care of a burglar from a nearby town. He was first beaten and then threatened. And they are back to being children. But there's constant reminder at their side of the other life. 15-year-old Brandy is the darling of the group. That's pretty much what all the boys tell us. They'll kill anyone their commander asks them to kill. There are some who can't take the life as an underground operator. Muang joined up when she was 15. Today at 19, she's a young mother who has recently quit. Girls are particularly at risk of rape and abuse. Still, several outfits find them useful. Lunking, a former rebel, told us it's not an easy life. <laughs> Personally, I feel very sorry for children who enter into militancy at an early age as they are not physically and mentally prepared. If it goes on like this, our society or our nation as a whole can be in jeopardy. Some of the boys carry photographs of their girlfriends back home. Someday they hope to return. Many of them even went to school. But then they were convinced that the gun was a better tool against a society that would give them little. These underage boys joining the uh, underground outfit is concerned. I really feel that it is very unfortunate. Most of these youths, especially the underage boys, are helpless in the sense that some have been compelled to. Some boys, all, although they do not want to join, are made to, forced to. Some organizations or outfits want to train the young people because they feel that it is the underage who can be brainwashed properly. Basically, it is mainly because of this uh, economic hardship. This is the more familiar face of a child soldier in Sierra Leone, Uganda or Rwanda or even closer home in Afghanistan. But there's hardly been any international or national concern about the hundreds of children recruited, trained, maimed and killed in conflicts across India, particularly in the Northeast. The use of children as soldiers has been universally condemned as abhorrent and unacceptable. Yet very little has been done to address this issue. For example, has the Indian government ever raised this issue with NSCF, one of the militant groups it has been in ceasefire agreement for years? With Kaiman Kwang in Manipur, Kishara Bharachaji for NDTV. Well, send us your opinion. You can write to us at feedback at NDTV.com or SMS. Yes,